It's me, Mikey Pipes. I'm back. We're at Ferguson, picking up today's boiler. Let's say hi to my boy, Asher. Stay tuned. What's up? There he is, the infamous Asher. He is gonna deliver me a boiler today. Ain't that right? Look at you, You're like a keyboard uh, addict over here. Yo, I need to add a length of two inch uh, black pipe to the order. Okay. Okay. You, you want the, you pick up the, what is this? The picking IM4. up the iron four you with all the steam brother, fittings. You did your brother in law? That was the brother in law of one of the boiler I saw on your The, the CGA four. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, but we got to give these old people some heat today. Yeah. Fully carbonized boiler. We're swapping it out. We'll be done by 12. Holy mackerel. Mikey Pipes don't play. How much? Five bucks. Five dollars for a bucket. So I can promote Ferguson? Ferguson should be pro promoting pi Mikey Pipes. But then you're going fishing with us. I'm not going, I don't fish. <laughs> Mikey Pipes don't go fishing. Mikey Pipes gets paid. <laughs> All right, we got, the pick, we got our pick the ticket. Let's go pick up the boiler and the pipe with Godzilla. While the fine gentlemen inside are getting our fittings, let's go pick up the boiler. Oh yeah. See? Mikey Pipes has one. I just prefer the big black thing in my mouth. <laughs> you know, I was thinking about live streaming this today. I was really thinking about live streaming it, but I had to bring the laptop and I gotta plug it in. I gotta steal the guy's Wi-Fi. But I was like, you know what? I'll do a time-lapse recording instead. There he is. What's up? What's up? Spelling B-Champ. Spelling B-Champ. Godzilla. Look at, it. Look at the precise skills of these Ferguson drivers, man. These warehouse guys, man. You got to make sure you take care of them come the holidays. Bow. IN4. Giving people some heat today. Ain't that right, Godzilla? Yeah. Making it happen. By the way, if you have not subscribed yet, it's Mikey Pipes. Subscribe now. Mike, Saint Mike commands you. All right, listen, I'm not a hater, but there's a difference between being a rough and plumber, like this guy, and service plumber, like me, Mikey Pipes. See that? Night and day difference. And again, no disrespect, no disrespect whatsoever, because listen, everyone's got a, got a, got a place and position. But when you're doing rough and work, this is what your truck looks like. You can't, you can't maintain it because you have so much shit you got to have in the truck at all times, right? Yep. You know? All right, there she is. All right, I'm gonna get it done. I'm gonna give him a heat today. Take out this beast. We got him. Mikey Pipes got you covered. All right. You guys are in for a treat today. Got the time-lapse GoPro set up, and we're gonna take out this boy. Yeah, she's fully carbonized. One of the bad things with gas boilers is that uh, it's hard to scrub them down completely. Let's quickly take a look at the power here. <clears throat> There's a switch. Went to this box. I was gonna cut it from down here, but when I look up there, I only have two sets of low voltage wiring. This looks like lamp wire, right? This brown wire, but it's actually going to this transformer. Huh, look at that. And there's our thermostat wire right there, the white one, which goes there. All right, we gotta take line voltage from up there. Let's see if there's power there. Pipes can do it. Uh, yeah, there's no power there to the transformer. So there's our transformer. There's our line voltage going to that switch. See that? So we gotta be careful there. All that chocolate milk. You kids thirsty? Mikey Pipes commands you to drink from this Burnham America carbonized boiler. Yeah, she's empty. Cool. <laughs> All right. Now we disassemble this bad boy. Let me dump this out. Oh, 
those people were saying, yeah, you can scrub the boiler clean. Yeah, good luck with that. Yeah, that should work. We hope. Yeah, there she goes. Still locked on the bottom. Yeah, she'll go. Split, split them apart. Mike and Mikey pipes are splitting it up. Well, actually, it's mostly him. I'm just watching. Somebody's got to hold the camera. Yeah, we need a production crew. Bingo. One done, four to go. Five section boiler. One, two, three, four, five. Voila. She's apart. All right, now we haul them up, clean up the work area, bring the old one, the new one down. All right, I got Godzilla. Using for the first time ever these Bacalao European wrench. It's adjustable. You want to try to put more force that away from not as high because you're pulling down the pipe. Mm. All right. Alternatively, you want to hold back right here. Yeah. Let's get a, uh, where's the little wrench? Here. Alternatively, you want to get a wrench. Get in there, baby. Let's see if we can get this. There you go. So now you can hold back there and tighten up that. Try that. With the bacalao. Actually, it's not bacalao, it's baco. The fish. The 142. Whoa, look at the guns. Ladies. You're digging this, and remember, leverage is key. So the closer you start off with a closer angle between the two wrenches, mm -hmm. the more leverage you'll have. So try to bring that down or bring the pipe wrench up. There you go. More all about the leverage. You gotta hold back there. The hole, you gotta hold back. Don't get the hold back. Is it easier? Yeah. It's pretty tight already, though. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Okay. So there's our wet return. Inch and a quarter. We're gonna come across. Elbow down to there. Now, you guys are going to probably hate on me for covering up the the chimney clean out, but we got a stainless steel liner in here. Yep. So it's going to be clean, but this is a moot point. It's irrelevant. Mm -hmm. And there's no fireplace up there. So we're good. Getting it done. <laughs> All right. So while the other mic is working on the two inch header piping with the equalizer, I'm working on the wet return. It's a little after 9 a.m. I'm going to work on the electric and the control side, which is the left side of the burnum. All right, we're going to start with the side glass valves. The one with the little drain goes in the bottom. And you guys thought that Mikey Pipes didn't own a Crescent adjustable wrench. Well, if that's what you thought, you thought wrong? You thought wrong? Isn't that right, Godzilla? Back. Lefty loosey, righty tighty. Look at this. We're going righty. My trademark. That's right. I don't know if you could trademark that, though. But you may be able to. You 
you know, for use in a, in a brand, which is what you'll become. You're becoming a brand. There's a rubber washer and a brass washer in there. I want to make sure you set it kind of center. Tightening this up. Don't go too much on it. Don't go beast mode like Godzilla. You want to be gentle because you make this nut tight enough, you will crack the glass. And if you've never cut a glass before, don't let this be your first time cutting glass. When you break it, putting together the tabs go on top. Now I know what you guys are thinking. I should probably. Set this up first. We're good. Don't worry. St. Mike is good. Give her the all, you know. Oh, how you doing, mama? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, give it all. How you doing? You yeah, forget about it. I'm from New York. Yeah. Cleaning the threads we'll on gold. the nipple. You know, we got to clean the threads on the nipples. You know, make them nice and clean. That way we could, uh, you know, lube it up with some, some pipe dope. <laughs> you know what I mean? Some pro dope. There you go. Pro dope. The Hercules Company. I think it's Hercules. No, it's by Oakley. An Oakley affiliate. Is that BBC Holdings? Holy shit. Oh, it's NCC Holdings. <laughs> I thought it said BBC. <laughs> Big black flashlights. <laughs> Remember, guys, lefty loosey, righty tighty. I'm gonna go on six times. There you go. Uh -uh. Hopefully, you got you got to be good there. Mm -hmm. Let's get some dope. Remember, you can apply it with the direction of the Teflon tape. Lefty loosey, righty tighty. Gotta, gotta lube it up. Yeah. Before it'll screw in there. You know? You gotta lick it. Where are those redheads? <laughs> oh, there they are. <laughs> Where's my scratchy paper? Scratchy paper. <laughs> These motherfuckers. Yeah, we got the union. Let's get the union on there. I'm not worried about any water being stuck in there. We got good pitch. We got good pitch. You know what I mean? Forget about, Forget about it. it. Forget about it. Now we got Godzilla with the rigid 24 inch, two inch black union. Remember lefty loosey righty tighty. And I got the big black thing. Shine some light on the project. Technically, he can use a 36-inch wrench on this, and he's going to want to grip that now because he wants to hold back on that T right there. Where'd it go? There it is. There you go. Get the three-footer up in there. Get the three-footer on the on the T right there. And you're going to hold back with the larger wrench. Mm -hmm. Remember I told you about the leverage? Yep. Nice and tight. You know, Mikey Pipes likes it nice and tight. <laughs> you know, like those 
those redheads, they, they, they're they tight to get in there, <laughs> oh, you know, yeah, into, the, sure. into the uh, BX. Uh -huh. I mean, AC, I mean MC cable, you know? Sometimes it's tight. <clears throat> and we're gonna do some uh, BX here because I'm gonna throw in a little switch here. Well, maybe I'll do it up there. And then run some BX to my uh, 1900 box. Now, technically that's not a 1900 box. That's a 1900 box, but you guys catch the drift. Don't correct Mikey Pipes. <clears throat> Actually, feel free to crack Mikey Pipes. You know, every day is an adventure. Every day, you know, if you don't learn something new every day, then you're doing something wrong. Mm -hmm. Oh, and guess what, guys? The Testo. The Testo lived. The Testo lived. The Testo was cold. It was so cold. It was cold and tired. It was so cold that that little air pump inside, she just couldn't pump anymore because yeah. she was so cold. So I brought it to the shop this morning, mm -hmm. put it in front of the heater, and like magic, Mikey Pipes commanded it to turn on. And she turned on. All right, let me stop bullshitting around here and get this job done. All right, we're good. All right. <laughs> Yo, now, this light right now, it makes you like legit look like a saint. You see the little halo and everything. <laughs> May God be with you. <laughs> this guy. I'm also with you. All right. Day is not complete without utilizing the redhead. Yes, sir. I'm going to stick the redhead inside the BX. All right. Now we're going to take this little BX connector. Mm -hmm. oh my, I, already, I already see the hate coming already. Yep. It's not BX. Yeah. It's not BX. Okay. Well, well, guess what? A lot of electricians call it BX. And when you go to supply house, ask for BX. So I say you want 14.2 BX, they're giving you 14.2 BX. Oh. All, right. All right, so let's got this plastic sheathing on it. It's got a ground, as you see there. Mm -hmm. Let's just cut off the plastic sheathing. And we're gonna, I'm gonna show you how to wire up your steam boiler that you're installing. Mm. All right, so let's stick that in there. All right, like that. Now, Mikey Pipes would be like, would be the, really the man if he used it if he used like three eighths or half inch conduit mm -hmm. right and ran that up and around with a nice little bendy bend you know mm. mikey pipes the bet you need to get in here that's my get up there. let me get up in there we have thermostat wire mm -hmm. behind uh on this other wall okay you want to that it all right let's go over the wiring on a Burnham independent gas-fired boiler. This is your roadmap. It's very easy. But let me just show you a couple pointers that I've learned, uh, cause I've been doing this for a while. So a few pointers out there. I'm bringing in my BX, okay? And I have my neutral, and I have my hot. I'll show you that in a second. And I got my ground. All right, my ground is going to the box right there. And there's no ground here, obviously, as you can see. But at least we're starting somewhere. And before I start wiring all this, I make sure the box is secure. I bring in all of my leads from all of the, the you know, like the pressure troll, the low water cutoff, the automatic vent damper, the relay, right? The gas valve and the gas control. And then I put on this plate, all right? If you put on this plate afterwards, then you kind of like shot yourself in the foot, right? And you have to cut it and then slip it over all the wiring. So make sure you secure this first. Um, I immediately get my uh, line voltage wired to my transformer. And if you see there, I put a little wire tie there, a little zip tie right there. See that? And then I wrapped the wiring and the wire nut with pipe insulation. And while I'm doing this, you know, I want to take the stress, because I'm letting this thing hang. I want to take the stress off this wire so it doesn't pull out of the wire nut. Now, I guess if I was using those Wagos, W-A-G-O, which I forgot and I left at home, I guess that would be uh, even easier. But I'm kind of weary using those Wagos on line voltage wiring. I have no problem using it on low voltage, but line voltage, and again, there's not much load here. Hardly anything. Maybe if we're running at an amp, that's a lot. Um, this transformer is rated for, let's see, 0.55 amps. So 
you know, half of an amp, you know, so there's really no load. So I guess it'd be okay, but, and I know you guys in Europe use it exclusively. So, cause why not are illegal there, at least, especially in the Netherlands, I think. So that's a little tip from right there. I'm going to do the, the neutral one, and then I'm going to show you how to wire up the uh, low voltage wiring. All right. So let's get this party started. All right. And remember, don't forget about your roadmap. Your roadmap will give you all the answers. And it is fairly, fairly easy to wire this up. We're going to start with the pink. Pink is identified by PI on the diagram. All right. So let's take pink here, pink there. And uh, mm -hmm. I like pink. Love pink. Me too. Yeah. So pink is taken care of. For reference, she's right there. See pink? Okay. Next, we have gray. There is a gray right there. And here is our other gray. <laughs> What's the matter? No, it's down about car dealership. Oh, uh, yeah. Safety. Roll back miles. Good miles. Good if you guys miles. remember, about a month ago, Mike's car burnt down on the way to work. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Luckily, he was still in his driveway, but, you know, psh, wow, it's crazy. That's scary stuff, man. Oh, yeah. wow. And he still worked that day. Yep, and he still went to work that day. Boss. Yep. All right. Let's do orange. There's orange there. Here's another orange. And basically everything is color coordinated here, right? We had two pink wires, two gray wires, two orange wires. It gets a little fun when we start dealing with the blues and the yellows and the reds. So let's focus on the reds, right? The red, here's one red. Again, another two wires. So there, and they just go in together, like that. Boom. Now, we're going to have some yellows. Now, if you take a look at the schematic, um, did we do the browns yet? Let's do the brown. Let's get the brown out of the way. There's one brown there. Where is the other brown? Brown. Where are you? Brown. Brown, oh, brown goes to thermostat, all right. And since we're gonna be utilizing the C wire, because we're gonna give them a Wi-Fi thermostat, you gotta pay special attention to here. So brown, right, is going to thermostat, and the other thermostat wire is going to blue, right? And blue is, power coming in right and our yellow right is our ground so this brown we are going to bring to red right like that actually the right or wrong no the red we use the white Sorry, there's the W, the signal coming back, all right? And we'll take the red, and that's gonna go to the blue, all right? So now, now we have all the blues. Here's the blue, right? Here's another blue. And we have another blue over there, okay? So there's all of our voltage and the blue, which is power coming from the transformer. Obviously don't these people know that don't these people know that they shouldn't be calling me? But I'm trying to make an educational video here to feed the people. Not subscribers. I know. <laughs> then you get the post notification, that's why. Alright. Now blue, blue. We got that blue there. That's gonna be the common blue. We don't need that one there. So that's gonna go there like that. Right? And now we have the yellows, which is common. So here's a yellow. All right, we're gonna cut that off. 
we don't need this. Why they put that there, I don't know, but ah, get off. So yellow, 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 yellow. And I guess this is where a Wago connection would be nice. Those damn Wagos. Lego my Wago. That's what the Wago is. The, the little uh, push. Yeah. Thing. And uh, I bought them. That would have been nice instead of the fucking. Um, Warren nuts. Yeah. 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 All good. Next time. Yeah. There will always be another. will always be another. Sure. Mikey Pipes and the Pipe Doctor crew will bring heat to more people in need who are cold. Cold. Alright. Just show you the ice a little. Look there, a looky looky. I'm working on putting together the steam. Electric is almost done. I just gotta bring the BX to up there with a switch. We gotta extend that wet return to here. And then put a T in there. Three-quarter T, three-quarter short nipple. And we gotta bring in water. So, yeah. All right, welcome back. A little after 11 a.m. And I want to give a special shout out to the 30.7 percenters. 30.7 percent. 30.7 percent of viewers of this channel are subscribers. The best way, besides buying merch, the best way, besides buying merch, <laughs> to support Mikey Pipes and Godzilla. Every proceed, every profit that for Godzilla he's getting. Shit. Minus maybe like a like a, an management fee. Like maybe like five percent management fee. Have a, oh, oh, we can negotiate that. I'm cool with that. You're cool, five percent management fee. So you buy Godzilla merch, he's getting ninety-five percent of the profit. Mikey Pice will get 5% as a management fee. That's all. Strictly, I'm going to be his manager. He is going to have celebrity status. Ladies, I know, I'm not saying anything. <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, Mike, on the other hand, we call him, this is Mike G. He doesn't really get much screen time. I'm sorry. <laughs> all right, our wet return is connected. Now, Mikey Pipes put a drain there, a drain there. There's our fill backflow. And we're going to connect that. And we got the gas. She's already wired. Start commissioning with Testo 320. By the way, the Testo 320 started working this morning. First thing I did, went on Amazon, canceled that order. <laughs> oh my God, it thinks. Expensive, right? It's expensive. Sure. And it sucks, by the way. Because yeah. I, I did a product review oh, of the Testo 300. And it sucks. Yeah, you know, one. I don't like it. It's like Android based or something. It's Android based. How you, come on, you brand new technology. How do you not have a USB C port to charge it? You're still using the micro USB. What is wrong with them? But I, I like their new Testo uh, uh, refrigerant manifold. Uh, you, you know, you saw that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The problem is you can't buy it yet. Really? Yeah, I saw so Johnstone has it in their February uh -huh. uh, flyer, but it's not available anywhere. Board at 19? Yeah. Ion TV? What did I, I bought a 10 though. I bought before you. Yeah, you bought way before. I bought when we were at that Dunkin' Donuts, at that, uh, that, that fast food spot in Howard Beach. Yeah, Remember, yeah, I got yeah. a phone call, like, yo, McDonald's. you gotta buy Ion TV. McDonald's. Yep. And now look, 10 cents to the moon. It's at 85 now. To 85 cents now, less than a month later. Yep. You know why? You know, you gotta take care of yourself long term. You know, I, I don't. I'm not. I don't work for a Fortune 500 company. Mm -hmm. No 401k here. No pension. Mm -hmm. Got to invest wisely. Yes. And you know what? Whoever the guy who sent me this, Baco, that fish with the fish hook, the 142. See how effortlessly that was tightening up this plug. China. See that? China. I'm just saying. All right, putting on a drip leg there. The three inch nipple. Actually, it's not three. Well, yeah, it's maybe it's two and a half. Don't worry. I'll uh, 
I'll make sure people look the other way. The drip leg. The union outside the boiler, where it should be. Oh, that should have been sitting somewhere. Blackman, AKA Ferguson. It was all wired up, ready to go. Put in our surge master in the boiler. We're gonna have some nice lime green water. Mikey Pipes likes to give dry, dry steam. Ready to crack open that? Yep. We'll give the old match test. I smell gas. Okay. And we'll use the tobacco. One-handed mic to do it. There we go. All right, I gotta hold back on that bad boy though. Urgh, okay. Held back just, just perfectly good. All right, now, as you guys like to know, I like to make a little thermostat bypass up above. Get off. Wrong way. Lefty, loosey, righty, tighty. Look at that. Mikey Pipes did it wrong. All right. Get in there, bad boy. Uh, we're just going to bypass the thermostat right now. The time now is... 11.46. You hear that? That's the sound of my spark igniter. Houston, we have primary pilot lit. Houston, we have main ignition. First stage open. I'm waiting for secondary. Here it comes secondary, guys. Here it comes. There we go. We have liftoff. Liftoff, 11.36 a.m. February 21st, 2021, Burnham S-I-N-4. We're gonna let this bad boy rip, get some get some heat up in her, and then we'll take out the Testo 320 combustion analyzer and see how she's firing. Because as Mikey Pipe says, if you ain't testing, you're guessing. Sensor? No, the uh, Series 80 White Rogers. It is 11.50. System has been running for approximately 15 minutes. Here's our combustion results so far. As you can see, she sounds like a barbershop hair clipper. Yesterday she was frozen. She was frozen. She was cold and tired. Cold and tired. And just for clarification, all you guys out there who uh, think you know better, that is where the probe goes. Why? You're not gonna put it there because then it's mixed with diverted air. Don't put it there, it's mixed with air. Geniuses, I swear. But that's where my combustion analyzer probe goes. Just deep in there, right up in there. And while you're there, make sure we don't have any spillage. So our carbon monoxide is at 28 particles per million. We're at 43 particles per million of uh, you know, available free air. All right, so that's the uncalculated number. No, actually, that's the calculated number with air, oxygen, sorry. Uh, our O2 uh, is right where it should be. I like to be between five and a half, almost five, I'm sorry, four and a half, almost 5%, to right around maybe nine. So it's a wide range. Again, this is a atmospheric 85%, 82% efficient boiler. Then my stack temperature of 444 degrees and my gross efficiency is 80.3 percent. <clears throat> we take a look at the sticker. Let's see if I can get back there. Uh, I can't get back there, sorry. But you know, she's within specification and I'm quite confident with those numbers. Let's take a look at our flame. You gotta keep in mind she has, she's still kind of cold. And mind you, it looks kind of looks kind of yellowish so we're gonna get the we're gonna get the get the get, check the gas pressure right here all right stay tuned all right let's turn our power back on as you can see i'm checking the outlet side of the gas valve all right and we're measuring inches of water column 
Okay. We want to make that the gas pressure. The minimum on the manifold is three and a half inches. So we're at 3.73. So we had a higher a higher amount of, of CO coming out of the unit you know, out of the exhaust. So now we're gonna take our Testo 320. We're gonna dial this down a little bit. I'm gonna take my other Testo um, pressure uh, gauge and see if I can get this down a little bit to 3.5, are my numbers better, all right? Because remember, if you ain't testing, you're guessing. All right, cut it down to three and a half inches of water column. My carbon monoxide went down a little bit, my oxygen increased a little bit, and my efficiency dropped a little bit. But we're gonna let this thing bad boy heat up. All right, other than that, she's good. Let's do a quick little overview. Side glass, Hartford loop, we drop down. We've got a drain there, the bottom of the Hartford loop. We've got a drain there on the bottom left hand side of the boiler. We come up, we come across, we catch our wet return, come back to the boiler. Real quick, our gas. We're going to put a valve tag here. We've got our drip lag, comes across, union. This is our low water cutoff. This is our pressure troll. I'm sorry, our pressure gauge. This is our pressure troll. That's the pigtail. Transform with all the electric you saw in there. Inside here, you got your thermostat relay, your gas valve. The electronic ignition module on the other side got a skim port as you know mikey pipe use surge master i don't need to skim over here relief valve three quarter 15 psi out the back elbow piece of iron pipe with no threads on the end got my water coming out with the water tank was right here i would have tried to avoid this but as long as he fills from this location all the time this will never get clogged all right and it'll drain from there and there, the homeowner, accordingly. All right, I'm not too happy with the exhaust piping though, but we do have a good draft. You know, I was not permitted to bring the boiler over so the center of the boiler could be centered with the flue. So, moved that over. I used three five inch 90s. I got a six by five smoke reducer here. It's my first five inch adjustable 90. I got a small piece of five inch smoke pipe there. Another adjustable five inch 90. This is an eight inch actually piece. How do I know it's exactly eight inch? Because when I went to measure it, this is the piece that was left over from that. And it was exactly eight inches. But you'll love it when that happens, guys. <laughs> it was exactly eight inches. Another adjustable 90. Again, all these are rolled on the 45s a little bit. And we're golden. See, this is what I mean by it. I'm not too happy with that. You see how it's, see how that is over there? I'm not too happy with that, but it is what it is. They got heat. They got heat. Good old Burnham. IN4. IN4. Take a look at our numbers again. We good. We good. What you say, Mike? Looks good. Looks good. Next will be their water heater. Stay tuned. If you guys like this, this was a kind of a commentary as a backup to the, the GoPro with the 10 second time lapse for the past, let's see, 9, 10, 11, 12, past four hour job. You know, I got the time lapse. That'll be the time lapse Burnham SIN4 gas boiler installation. I'm going to post that simultaneously with this video as well. And we'll see which one does better, you know, and let me get your thoughts, feedback, comments, criticism down in the comments section down below. And as always, I'd like to give a special shout out to the 30 point, what was it? Two percenters? 30.1. What was it? I forgot. 30.1 percenters. I love all of you. And if you're just seeing this now or hearing this for the first time, 30 point, I think 2% of the viewers to this channel are subscribers. And it all helps, it all helps the, the YouTube algorithm. You know, the more people who are subscribed that actually watch these videos, the higher the ranking this channel gets, which means more subscribers come and more people learn. That's at the end of the day, more people should learn. I don't care if you're 10 years old or 110 years old. You know, there's a right way of doing things and the wrong way of doing, uh, the wrong way of doing things. 
and I only do it the right way. Make no mistake about it. You guys were commenting on Friday about that carbonized boiler. You guys damn well know for sure that you can never 100% clean a gas-fired boiler. You guys know that, all you Earl, Earl boiler, like Steve. Yeah, you get your brushes in there. You go like this, all right? Hold on, mix up. That's too close. Yeah, let's go like you go like that with your Earl boiler, right? And when, with your uh, your your uh, manometers, because none of you, none of you, maybe a few exceptions, have the right equipment, right? You know, I go to all these boilers, all these jobs, heating service calls. If I go to a hundred jobs and I see one test hole, that's a lot. And that's a damn shame. It really is. And most of the time, that one that one thing, we were there already. Make no joke about it. And I want to give some special shout out to the people in Texas. I heard it's getting warm out there. So hopefully you guys can piece everything together and uh, restore, you know, civil, so, uh, you know, civil peace of mind. And uh, yeah. So that being said, I think it's time for some lunch and Mikey Pipes commands thee subscribe subscribe now if you know what's best for you or I'm gonna stick Godzilla on you remember that and remember if you ain't testing you're guessing there's my combustion analysis here's my service tag all right and I got one more special thing for you guys Take a look at this. Bow. The boiler emergency switch plate label. There you go. OG. And just real quick, I get my, my boiler tags. I used to get them from Shubee. S-H-U-B-E-E. -E. And there are the hard plastic laminated uh, valve tags. 2,000 I think are like 2,400 bucks. Um, I get these, I get 2000 for like 200 bucks uh, from footbridgemedia.com. And they don't give you the cool zip ties, but it's, it's not paper, but it's kind of got, you know, it's hard to tear, but it's a great valve tag, good investment. And uh, like I said, it's not, it's not, it's not nowhere near the quality of Shuby, but you know, I'm not paying a dollar valve tag. I'm sorry, that's not happening. So there's one for my boiler water feed, and here's one for my gas. Right, before I leave, I'm gonna valve tag the gas for the the gas for the water heater, water heater supply, and then the main water valve, which is right over here. Sorry, I got sidetracked right there. Uh, here's our municipal take two. All right, here's our municipal water coming in. By the way, I am not aware of anyone who uses well water for domestic water purposes. The only instance where we use well water here on my part of Long Island near Queens is for irrigation systems. Um, I got a fairly large piece of property. Um, I got a well, you know. So anyway, public water coming in there. Here is our primary main shutoff valve. You know, the only time you ever want to really touch this is when you have to service the water meter. So if you ever have to turn off your water, see, there you go. Emergency water valve. Parallel to the pipe is on perpendicular is off like that so never do that you know if that one fails and starts flooding at your basement you know you're up shit's creek without a paddle so word of a word, word to the wise always do the one after the meter okay all right let's go change the thermostat all right what do you guys think wow it's great <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the real main difference besides you know the boiler is you know the controls on the left hand side um, unlike the one you had everything here is electronic um, you lower the cutoff you know when you blew down that that valve yeah. once a month uh, you're actually mechanically cleaning that thing um, this does it electronically you know wow. there's a this little black box right here there's a probe that sits inside the boiler water attached to the side of the boiler. And as long as it senses water, you're good to go. Um, you'll notice to the left of that, we have our sight glass. Oh, yeah, and yeah, as you yeah. can see, the water is, looks like it's radioactive, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, I took some, I stole some uh, radioactive isotopes from Russia oh. and I poured it in there to, to accelerate, you know, the heating yeah. of the house. I'm joking. I'm joking. Educate, right? <laughs> 
Uh, no, so what we I add a on a on a new boiler, um, I add a steam boiler treatment uh, to the water, uh, which helps it you know neutralize some of like the oils and things that are within there, but also helps give you more of a drier steam. Oh. Uh, the more dry the steam is, the more efficient the system is. Um, and event, you'll notice over time that, that that lime green color will turn into like a darker red. Uh, there's no harm. It's not blood. Don't worry about it. Uh, but that means it's not effective anymore. Uh, and and uh, when we service boilers, like the ones we service, you know, on an annual basis, uh, we add the treatment back to the system. Just try, try to keep everything clean. Uh, but the biggest thing, the other biggest change you're going to notice is that on, on this side here, you have a couple of valves. Yes. Now... The valve on the far bottom, right. that's the valve of the water coming back to the boiler, right? Okay. That's called the return condensate. And uh, some guys, you know, won't put a valve there. It'll just be gravity fed, but, you know, it can get clogged there. Okay. So we put a valve there. And uh, once a year or maybe twice a year or twice during heating season, you'll you'll take some water out of there and make sure it's clear. And then and refill in there, right? Yeah, and then refill there, exactly. Right. Um, and on the... Over here, this is the the boiler drain for the left side of the system. Okay. It's, it's not the left side, it's just the left side of the boiler. If I open up this valve, or if I open up the valve that's over here, right there, right. it's the same water. Oh, right? See. Now, when, you, when, you're, when you're draining this boiler once a month, right? right. Um, every other month, use the opposite valve. I see, you'll switch them off. Yeah. And keep in mind that this, this will never clog this pipe here because this is where you add the water in. Okay. Right? So, but because this valve is not really used that much, it'll clog up and you'll open it like, and you'll give up and you'll go back to the other valve. Yeah, so, right. you know, here's, here's the, the valve and there's a valve tag there. It's marked boiler water supply. You'll add water halfway, three quarters full. Right. And hopefully, you know, that's maybe once or twice a month. Okay. Uh, if you're doing it several times a week, we, we should really come back here and, you know, schedule a service yeah. call and find out where this water is going. Okay. Uh, if that's the case, we yeah. don't know, but your old boy, I know you said you had water several times a week. Yeah. You have a question, ma'am? No, go ahead. Okay. Um, other than that, it's pretty self explanatory. You got a service tag here. Um, the flue piping is a little bit different because I know you had the shelves here. I didn't want to move the boil over because then you have to move this over, but she's fine. She's good. Um, any questions? No, no. And now I, I keep an eye on that and I can I'll start draining. It's, it's this one that I drain, right? You could drain that one, or yes, the one. or the opposite and side. The, the bottom one, a couple times. The bottom a year. one, you know, a couple times a year. Yeah. Okay. Now, you have to shut the main gas off. No. Okay. And I say the water here have to be this side, but that's good. No, I'll double check that before we leave. Actually, let me check that right now before I forget. You know, there's always there's always bad. It's not really bad. This is more of a disclaimer. Um, again, I don't build these things. I don't manufacture them. Right. But I assemble them. And when I assemble them, I spare no expense. I make sure it's done the right way, 100%. And if I'm not doing it the right 100%, I'm not doing anything at all. But keep in mind, anything man-made is subject to failure at any given time. Now, granted, you should not have a problem with this for, for many, 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 many years. But in the event you do have a problem, it'll probably be with the first day or week. Yeah. And the problem is maybe an electric, something electrically was shorted inside, maybe a part died, because things do happen. Now, these are tested at the factory, you know, but they don't really fire them you know, in a factory right. because you just can't. Yeah. Um, but if something goes wrong, don't hesitate to call. I'm here to help. Just like you know, when you called on Friday last week, you know, we found the problem, we fixed it, that, we fixed it, and now you're done. And again, and you probably will not experience any problem because 99% chance you won't have any problems, but if you do, don't panic, just call, and we'll come right over, and it's something, usually something simple. Just keep in mind, you know, you said you were adding water every few days. Right. Um, if you may, you know, you may want to check the water level, you know, later this afternoon to the evening, see where that is. Uh, if you have no heat, you know, the, I didn't show you the low water cutoff, but that black box I was telling you about, right. to the right of the, the green side glass, yeah. Well, it, when there's no, not enough water in it, the red light's going to come on. Okay. And it's going to want you to add water. So you go to the, the valve on the opposite side, right. you'll open it up, you'll watch the side glass level come up, yeah, and you'll turn right. it off. Yeah, it's a lever now, not yeah. like the Does knob. Does it shut itself off automatically if it's low on water? Yes. Like a safety valve? Correct, yes. Okay. So if, if it runs out, of, runs out of water, it's going to turn off, the red light's going to come on, you're not going to have any heat until you add more water. Right. 
Just be very careful. Don't overfill the system. Right, right. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I've, it, it happens, you know, some people just think, oh, it's a brand new boiler. Like, oh, it needs more water. No, because it happens. You know, I did one, I think, in the beginning of the heating season. He didn't have a feeder before, like an automatic valve. I don't know what he was thinking, but he just opened the valve and walked away. Wow. And he started doing work because he's working from home, right? And I see, you know, his water's pouring out of the radiators. Wow. And he called me panicking with, mind you, it was less than 24 hours after he had it. Wow. Wow. Right? And I'm like, come on, what are you doing? You're killing me here. And he's yeah. screaming. I'm like, but listen, sir, you add too much water. So just keep that in mind. Yeah. Don't add more than what you need. And it's, you know, up to three quarters full is sufficient. Yeah. Okay. All right. Actually, oh, what is this thing? Flashlight.